This is a motor off of a Ramsey winch. Can you want to take the motor off of whatever bracket you're welding so you don't get the possibility of any arcing in there and ruin their motor? And if somebody brings you something like this they want repaired, ask as many questions as possible. Because if I wouldn't have asked, I would have thought I would have had to keep these machined edges nice the whole way around. But on this specific part, it doesn't matter. The only spot that almost contacts is this very upper corner. For this ear, you want to make sure it's as flat as possible. See how this part has a little raised ear here? So I have to hang it off the edge, make sure that's nice, nice and flat. Put a weight on it if you need to. And then set that back in, back in there and see how good it fits. A lot of times when it breaks, it'll peel and break. And you have spots that keep it shimmed out or spaced out, so you have to be mindful of that and come in here and file and grind down any spots that are like that so it fits nice and good, as good as you can, the way it came. This one's pretty good, so I'll probably just clean it up. And for your sanity as a welder, ask the person that's bringing you a part that needs to be repaired to clean it as good as possible. Get all the grease and grime off and use brake cleaner. But no matter what, because they're not a welder, they don't do it for a living, they'll never clean it as good as you need it cleaned. So like here, we want to get all this paint and everything off of this little ear too so it doesn't turn into black, a black sooty mess while we're trying to weld it together. First off, not all castings are created equal. A lot of them are lower quality than others. So you might wanna just put a good sized tack weld on there. Then test that with some pliers and break it and see how strong it is. So that one broke right down the center of the weld tack and it bonded to both sides really good. So that means that the filler rod's biting in good and we're good to go. Then grind that little tack back off so it fits back together good. And for this piece to make it stronger than it was, it's kind of a bad design. How it necks back down and gets thin right here, that's why it cracked. It is I'm going to be gobbing quite a bit of material up on it. And when you do that, it's going to want to warp and pull up so it won't be flat. So one thing you can do, get your main piece sitting nice and flat on the table, tack it here, and then tack your ear down to the table too so it doesn't have the possibility of pulling up. And then just break it all off when you're done welding. And see how that's gapped up, so clamp that tight. There's 10 different ways you can do this, I'm just showing you one way. Get that air fit back in there nice and snug the way it was. Get a pretty big fat tack on there so it doesn't crack when you're welding the rest of it. And then I nipped that little sharp ear off because once you get over here and start welding on that, it's just going to liquefy and melt away anyway, so you might as well just get rid of it. So I'm tacking it in three spots so it holds in place. You don't want to just start welding because this will grow and move around, so get that tied in tight too. Like I said, there's probably 10 different ways to do it. So if you want to get a full penetration weld, you got to bevel this out like I've shown in other videos. But on this one, I'm just going to gob it up and put all the strength and thickness up here above the crack. It'll burn into the crack maybe halfway, but it probably won't go through the whole way, the most sections. This one's a pretty filthy, nasty casting, so you see we got this big porosity spot where gases came out. 
So we want to grind that out with a carbide grinder, open that up and then fill it back in. And I'll leave a link below for these specific burrs that I like using for this type of work. After digging into that, you can see how crappy this casting is. There's little pit marks everywhere. So you just keep grinding in, welding over it. If it keeps doing it, just do it a couple times so it cleans up. Be patient with it. That's relatively clean for a cast weld, so we'll just stack on top of that and keep building it up. And this is a relatively thin casting, so one benefit of having it welded and sucked down tight to this aluminum plate is it'll help pull heat away from it and not let this overheat so you don't have to keep cooling it down with an air hose or quenching it with a wet rag. It's staying relatively cool. And you can adjust your wave balance down to clean this a little better, but then you sacrifice arc stability. The tip of your tungsten might start liquefying and shaking around, and then your arc goes all to hell. So typically I like to keep the wave balance to where it's getting the penetration and not the heat coming back up into your tungsten. And then just deal with a little bit of the soot on top. And on the website I show you how I prefer to shape my tungsten. Here's a tool you might want to get for cutting tack welds off. Link in the description below for this. thick as all of this is compared to the other side. We probably don't need it, but just for peace of mind, it's probably a good idea to bevel these out and fill them in too. And then right there, that would be a spot where a crack would start to form. And I prefer to grind all this stuff out dry without any fluid. And it will start gumming up your tip a little bit, especially if you're doing it right after a weld and it's still warm and soft but it's better than packing in any, any type of contaminants like WD-40 or cutting fluid because then that just makes the weld even harder to deal with. Okay, I probably went Captain Overkill on that one, but let it cool down for a bit and then smooth it out, make it look nice. I'm gonna call that good. It's thicker than the part was before. It's got a lot of porosity up here because you can see how poor of a casting it was, but I just made sure I put on a lot more material than there was over here at the weak points. Probably the best way to do this would be to use longer bolts and stack this up even higher so you got more thickness, but this is gonna be fine for what it's used for. Like I said, it's not a precision part. And then on the back side, I didn't weld that all the way in because I don't think it needs it. And if this was, a precision mating surface in here. You'd want to put it in a four jaw chuck on a lathe and come in here real careful and dial indicate everything, zero it in and then cut this smooth so it's concentric. But for a winch, I think it's good to go. Thanks for watching. And for you guys that are new at doing this repair kind of stuff, Make sure to let your customers know that you want to know if it ever breaks and warranty it because you want parts like this to come back if they break so you can analyze it and see what went wrong and how you could have done a better job. And that'll help get 
a good word of mouth about you going around instead of somebody just saying, oh, this part broke, and then you never knowing about it. If you're a beginner looking into getting a good TIG welder, this is the one I recommend and I sell on my website. It's 225 amps, so it does stuff like this pretty good. You're limited on thickness on aluminum, though, up to, you know, like quarter inch or three eighths if you preheat it, but really good bang for the buck. It's $869 on my website, same as everywhere else. Thanks for watching.